everyone and welcome back to another professional prep video. In this video we start working with chapter 5 which is all about some object oriented programming and how to write classes. So as we start here let's talk about object oriented programming. As we said object oriented programming focuses and puts a great emphasis on reliability above all and in doing so encapsulation, inheritance, and polymorphism are three features that it focuses on. So let's talk about what those three features are. Encapsulation, number one. Encapsulation places methods that use attributes and the attributes themselves inside the same container to increase reliability. And encapsulation is going to be the focus of this chapter, so we'll be talking a lot about that in the coming videos. Inheritance. Um, inheritance reuses already thorough classes to increase reliability. That's something near the end of the course. Polymorphism, also later on, after inheritance. Um, polymorphism makes methods of same names but distinct behaviors responsible for their own actions to increase reliability. So more on those two later, but let's get into some encapsulation. So first thing we should know, this is going to be about the anatomy of a class. Um, and then we'll get into individual things such as constructor, con constructors, comments, and some accessor and mutator methods. But for now, we should just take a look at the anatomy of a class. We should know that only members of the same class as attributes should be able to access those attributes. In other words, attributes should be made private. And let me show you um, some an example of that. So this is our attribute here, year. Um, this is our car class, which uh, we remember from previous videos. Um, our attribute year, we have a get uh, year, set year, constructor. Um, we have is equal, which we won't really be using in this video. And then here we have another public class. Now remember we can, um, from a previous video, we can only have one public class per file, and that is what we call our test um, that's what we, the public class is what we call our file name. So public class test, and thus our file name is test.java. If I try making car also a public class, then we run into some issues when we run the program. And you can see that right here. Um, class car is public, should be declared in file name. Um, you can see those issues. So we cannot do that. Car must, one of our methods must be, um, only one can be public. In this case, it's test. So attributes should be private. So year is the attribute here. You declare the attributes right here. Um, and it's made private. You can see the keyword private. So that means that anything outside of this class, only these getters and setters should be able to access year within the same class. Only within the same class as the attribute, only those methods should be able to access year directly. Outside of this class, however, if we come to this public class test, we cannot do that. So we create another toy we create a Toyota object and give it the year 2015. And then let's try to print instead of using a getter, let's try to print just Toyota.year. And let's see what that gets us. That gets us year has private access in car. It's an error. So that shows us um that we cannot just um, do Toyota.year because it's not just um, it's a it's a not a public attribute. It's private, and that's declared right here. Um, and that's important for security. Your attributes here should always be private, and methods in general are public. Constructor methods are always public. Um, the exception for um, methods should always be public is a thing called helper methods, which we'll talk more about later. Um, those are usually private, but anyway. Um, your attributes should be private um, for security reasons. You should not just be able to, from outside the class, access the Toyota.year. And if you want to do some bad programming design, um, an example of that, if we just make this in year and we don't do private in year, then sure enough, you can print the year, Toyota.year, from outside of the class. But that's not, and you get 2015, but that's not good programming design. Your attribute should always be private. Um, so then you might be wondering, how do we access um, private attributes from outside of that class? That's what we have our getter for, um, public in get year. And we have demonstrated this in previous videos as well. So instead of Toyota.year, we do Toyota.getYear. Um, it's that easy, but it enhances security um, as our attribute is private. And that will get us 2015. 
So you use that method, um, get, or it's called an accessor method in order to access the attributes. And a couple other tidbits of information that you should know to, um, for proper programming style, or rather good programming style, each class should have its own file, um, although that's not mandatory at all. So I don't follow this rule. You can see I have two classes um, in the same file, class car and public class test. Um, that just makes it easy to explain um, this to everyone because we can look at the two side by side and predict outputs like that. But in general, you should make sure each class has its own file. Um, so I'd have another file for test. And then you might be wondering, um, how do we interact two classes um, together if they're in different files like we did here? And um, the answer to that is that the multiple classes that interact need to be located in the same folder. So that's just um, something to keep in mind. Uh, nothing to test here, but keep that in mind, each class um, on file, and make sure you put classes that interact into the same folder. Um, you will get errors if you do not. Um, otherwise, that's the anatomy of classes. Um, that's all I have for you for now. Um, thank you everyone for watching. Please do subscribe, um, like our video. Uh, let me know if you have any suggestions for future videos. Otherwise, I'll see you next time when we talk about our next topic in writing classes, and that will be constructors. Thank you everyone.